Improving your conversion tracking is my strategy number seven out of 15 in our W e-commerce profit series. So why is conversion tracking so important? If you want to be able to see the changes that you have been doing in your campaigns, on your landing page, your products, your pricing, you need to be able to see what happened afterwards. And this is what we call conversion tracking. Uh, and what I would like you to do is to really write down every single step your customer has to take. Essentially, like from the first impression, from the first time they hear something about you until they buy and leave some profits with you. I want you to look at your traffic sources, your websites or landing pages, your email, CRM, your sequences and your checkout process. What are steps uh, that people have to go through and can you optimize some of those steps? Obviously, yes, there's always something to do. Uh, no e-commerce store is happy and I can promise you uh, that every single time I ask somebody to show me their shop, they are like, yeah, but we are still working on it. It's the same for me. I'm always still working on my website. That is just the default state everybody is in. But let's look at the concrete example. Let's just do this for an ad campaign because a lot of people in e-commerce are able to build profitable paid campaigns. And I think it's most important to crack the analytics parts if you are, if you are spending money on ads because otherwise you can so quickly lose your money. Yeah, and it, it puts you faster into the drain than if you just go for organic. So what happens in ads? You have an impression people see your ads people need to click they need to go to your page views uh, and, and see your sites they need to add something to the shopping cart they need to initiate the checkout and they need to buy something quite simple but are you already able to track these numbers in your analytics tool or in your shop software i, I hope you are and if you are doing this in a simple spreadsheet that is actually something that i'm going to recommend in a second so what I want you to be able to say is something like if I spend 5,000 euro on Facebook or Instagram ads, you get a 500,000 impressions, 5,927 people click. Okay, you get you lose some people because your website is a bit slow. So 5,300 people are on my website, 1,300 add something to the cart, 1,000 initiate checkout and 500 people buy something in my checkout. This is what you should be able to say. And of course, the story continues. But we are starting from the basics and upgrading the level. Your ability to track those numbers is absolute key. And your user journey might be different. It could be a lead generation step in between. It could be SEO tracking and your impressions in the search console, not your impressions in ads. It could be a mobile app experience. You need to define your own customer journey and have the ability to uh, define the numbers here for yourself. And that begs the question, but, but how do I do this kind of tracking? We had a nice talk about uh, Google Tag Manager. If you want to download those slides and watch the video, go to getpiratesgits.com slash tag manager. And there are many companies uh, showing support here and that are going to help you to set this up. But maybe you can start on your own and then improve over time, especially if you are starting to make higher sales. An investment in a good analytics setup usually results in a pretty good return of advertising spend. If you are already profitable without it, it can make you incredibly more profitable. In this meetup, we talked about Google Tag Manager as like a layer between your online shop and your analytics providers and your advertising tools. Let's say using Facebook ads for Instagram and Facebook, WhatsApp, use Google Analytics and Google Ads for those parts, YouTube ads, search ads, display ads, and you're using LinkedIn maybe for the, your B2B customer acquisition strategy to target other merchants. You need a tool stack that can help you. And a basic tool stack that, that I usually recommend is, first of all, given that your cookie consent solution, I'm gonna talk about that in a bit, is compatible with it, start using the settings in your shop yeah but if you want to go beyond that uh, google tag manager is a pretty good baseline 
and it is more simple way to to manage many cookies if you do advertising on many platforms it keeps you a bit more sane than hard coding everything google analytics i would say is like the basic tracking tool that everybody should have installed who is not forbidden to use analytics because of corporate policies google ads um, can receive conversions from google analytics but there are advantages to using the google ad conversion tags directly the facebook pixel is helpful for estimating customer lifetime value we're going to look at that in a second and then every other ad and service pixel may be your pinterest tag your bing tag or service pixels like your chat software or your crm you make it much more easier for your analytics tools to talk to each other if you have the complete overview of course you want to be responsible and only track what people are consenting to but that is the next strategy not this one and there are benefits beyond just better reports if you set up your conversion tracking properly for me the most important thing is that your conversion signals are used to optimize your campaign if you have a pretty broad facebook campaign let's say you're targeting five percent of the lookalikes of your past purchases on facebook and there are like 1.5 million people in that audience and you want facebook to be able to pick the best people that are most likely to purchase your product out of 1.5 million you better give facebook some feedback about what's working and what's not working this is what the what the conversion tracking setup is doing for you and me it's it's helping me to obviously see in a table of data what's working what's not but in the background it's the machine to machine talk that we as growth marketers have to keep on enabling so that they can optimize themselves. Another thing is if you, let's say, just use a spreadsheet, you cannot split that data as much as you like. If you wanna get a gender split or an age split afterwards, you cannot usually cannot do this in your spreadsheet. You have to have that data in your ads manager or in a tool like Google Analytics that allows you to do this kind of stuff. And your conversions can also be integrated with other tools like your CRM. Let's say you want to send messages, email messages only to people who have added something to the cart but did not check out. You need to be able to track that and to remind people that they forgot something in their shopping cart. So those kind of connections are benefits beyond just better reporting that I think are incredibly worth it and makes that strategy of improving your conversion tracking which doesn't sound sexy, a very likely candidate for a high impact tactic for doubling your e-commerce profits. If this was very detailed, I understand, you can download those slides at getpiratesgoods.com slash analyze and look at the numbers in your own time and see what makes sense for you. And you may want to watch some of the videos that come after this one is released on our YouTube channel or watch some of the ones before to get a bit broader context once the complete series is online. All right, and in the next part, we now learn that conversion tracking is so important, we need to be allowed to do conversion tracking. And for that, we need consent and we need to manage that well.